Hello all, Schematist here again for one more tutorial on how to add happiness to your tracks. Now this is a kind of funny question because I don't think it could really be explained, but I think I have a couple of tips to at least put some people in the right direction. If you are questioning how to create this happiness feeling, I think a lot of it is going to come from gut instinct and feeling and just practice, but there are some instrumentation choices that you could make to make it a lot easier. I made this track for an RPG game, and even though it's really small, he wanted a bright, happy track, and th what I did to do it was kind of simple. Basically, just picking the right instruments really made this happen. The main thing I used here was the spaccato strings, and then I also tweaked the kick drums a little bit with some EQ and rolled off the low end so it, instead of making a thump, it kind of made more of a pop sound. Again, releasing all that bass, because I feel like the bass is too deep then it might distract and take away from the kind of happiness kind of a sound. But this Spagato strings on its own, it sounds really happy, really playful, it has this feeling of bounciness to it. So if you can hear emotions and in instruments, I think that's one way to really, really drive this kind of happy song feeling. Um, the strings supported by this echo synth here that I have, echo, kind of even further heightens that happiness, sunshine, and rainbows kind of mood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play at least the first half of the song, and then so you can at least have a, an idea of what's going on and how it's happening with these little instrumentation choices so the spaccato strings are going here you've got you know your drum pattern up here which has like a light drum very pop very um, high frequency drums not not in the low range at all and then I've got a clarinet which is really really again like a friendly instrument it sounds really, kind of childlike almost and I've got an electronic piano making the chord progression to just hold the melody in place and I can't you can't go wrong with like a classic bass kind of a thing and then some flute for like some extra whimsical mythical kind of a feeling um, let me play that first part now So as you can see, it doesn't take much to create something that sounds pretty passable, and still, we've only used about 5 instruments here. So now that the groundwork for the song is basically made from the intro and the main melody, we can kind of swing over here to the right side and look at the breakdown and the ending, which ties back into the loop, which we don't really need to worry about because that's going to be fading out. But this next section really isn't that complicated at all as well. Uh, the drums here are slightly varied, but more or less they're going to be the same thing as what was laid out before and it's going to have this peppiness in it in it this kind of upbeat peppiness to it so that kind of is basically is on autopilot that can stay the same and the main change came from the uh the strings here as opposed to the last section they're still bouncy but they're not as busy in fact let me play this so you can kind of hear how this sounds one sec And so that is going to be the anchor for the rest of the section, as you can see. That, that pattern doesn't change until the song com comes to a complete halt. What I'm using to kind of create the movement is the melody from the clarinet and the flute and the varying bass lines here. The chord progression is also going to change, but it's nothing too drastic. But here's how that sounds.
really, really straightforward. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play this, this section here, both the breakdown and the ending, with everything playing at the same time. So you can kind of see how, even though we've only used five instruments, and we didn't add any instruments, we still got everything the same as what we used in the beginning, including the, um, the echo synth here for that kind of brightness feel. You're going to see that minimal amounts of instruments can do a lot of work and can achieve this kind of feeling that you're looking for, whether it be happiness or sadness. But let me give this a play now, one second. Okay, so that sums everything up, but like I said, if you're going to make something that sounds happy, the main thing you want to think about is what instrument are you using? What's the properties of your instrument? If you can listen to that instrument play alone by itself and think that it sounds happy, then you probably picked the right thing. But if it sounds sad or anything other than happy, then you should probably go back into the library and kind of scan that a little bit to see if you can find something that really matches your palette. Another thing to keep in mind is, are you in a minor key or in a major key? You know, that's another thing that comes into the equation, but that comes with practice as well. The main thing is just kind of, I would say, get an understanding of many, many instruments and learn their properties. Learn which instrument is good for one thing. You might think, hey, this horn is good for this kind of project, or this string is good for that kind of project. And then you'll start to slowly map out a shortcut in your mind of where to go to and what not to go to when you're looking to create a certain type of mood or theme. So um, this is Schematic signing out and uh, thanks for checking in again. If you have any questions just drop me a line and if you want to see something done differently then again just drop me a line in the comments below. Um, thanks for checking in and uh, take care.